Hi friends. Taking care of yourself should be your number one priority, but I know as an artist or creative, sometimes it gets put on the back burner. We're so focused on creating content or podcasts or music or visual art that improves the lives of other people that we kind of forget ourselves in the process. And so if you're in your winter season of life, if you feel like you're a little low energy, a little drained, I'm here to tell you that it is normal. There is nothing that needs to be fixed. Now, if you're feeling a little depressed, then maybe you should seek counseling, but understand that everybody works in seasons. And sometimes it's just that you're in your winter season. You're not broken, nothing's wrong with you, but you need time to reflect, to recharge, to unplug, come back to yourself and take care of yourself. So I'm gonna be sharing 10 of my self-care tips as an artist with you so that you can apply it to your life as you see fit. And hopefully when your spring comes, whenever that is, you'll be ready to go, ready to start walking and running into your creative journey. So let's get started. Number one is get enough rest. During a winter season, like winter, we don't get a lot of sunlight. Some people get the blues or seasonal affective disorder. And so that means that because there's a lack of sunlight and a lack of, and more like blue light and gray, you know, we're feeling a little blah. And that means that we want to go to sleep, want to go to bed. In winter season, it's okay to rest. It's okay to rest. Just like animals rest, they hibernate. They tuck away from everything to take care of themselves. Everything works in season. You need season. You need a season to replenish yourself and to, you know, regenerate all that energy you poured out in your other seasons like spring, summer, and fall. So it's okay to get enough, enough rest. So sleep in if you can, right? Go to bed early if you can. Take a nap in the middle of the day if you can. Listen to what your body needs and give it to your body. Rest is productive. It's okay to rest. Rest is where your ideas come from. Rest is how you heal. Like that's the only time your body can really regenerate itself is when you're sleeping and not doing anything. And the same goes with our creativity. My second tip is to do as little as possible in your winter season or in the winter in general. In the winter, I don't wanna leave the house. I don't wanna overexert too much energy. I don't want to do much of anything. And I feel like it's important for us to master the art of not doing anything. I did a video on this about how to actually get started with the art of not doing anything, how it's beneficial and helpful in your creative journey, but also just for healing purposes. Doing as little as possible when you have a limited reserve of energy anyway, helps you from being burnt out, overworked, being exhausted, right? Exhausted of everything that you have. I don't believe that an artist should give everything they have to a project or a work or a person. I feel like we have to leave a little bit in there so that we're not having to replenish ourselves from zero all the time. It's important that you leave a little room and that means doing as little as possible. Honor your energy. Honor the fact that you don't have energy to do everything. Honor the fact that you don't have the reserves to do everything that you would do in the summertime. It is okay. You have permission to do as little as possible. Along with this point, I tend to make things as easy for myself as possible, as easy for myself as possible in the season because I don't have it. Um, as someone who struggles with depression, um, which can be chronic, I don't want to irritate it or inflame it because I feel down on myself because I made a list of 10 things for me to do and I only got to one. If I know that in the season I don't have the energy to do 10 things, I'm not going to give myself 10 th things to do. If I need more time to do something and I'm working with a project on someone, I'm going to tell them it's going to take more time or set a boundary and say, you know what, I've met my limit for this this season. Talk to me next season and we can get the thing done. So honor the season, honor the energy that you have. The third tip I have is to make deep connections, deep conversations, nurturing conversations, things that fill your well. For some of you, that may mean going to counseling, which is totally fine. And some of you may just need to reconnect with some friends. You need to be in spaces that remind you that you are human, that you are loved, that you are okay, that you don't have to create something or produce something in order to matter. When I'm around my friends, I know that I don't have to put on, I don't have to pretend to be someone I'm not. They, Even though they support me in my art and my creativity, their love for me is not based on me being creative. Their love for me is for me. And I love that because I can be all of myself and I can have these deep connections. Counseling is really great for doing some introspective work, for having someone to mirror, um, mirror your things off of. It's really important um, to tap into yourself, to see what you need, to think about like the way that you think about things. Even the way that I was thinking about creativity, I felt like I had to always be creating and that's not what happens as a creative. You need time to live and gain experiences in order to create art in the future. And so in the winter time, I crave deep and intimate relationships. I crave deep and intimate conversations. And so I give myself that. So I give that to you as my third tip to take care of yourself in your winter season. My fourth tip for self-care during the winter season is to take in more entertainment. Do more things for the fun and the sake of doing things. 
you know, when we're doing all our work, we have to feel like we're always on mission. We kind of look at ourselves as a machine, but we're not. We need to be entertained too. We need to have fun too. So whether that means going skiing or, you know, picking up a hobby that you don't do because you're getting paid to do it or as an exchange of value, as we talked about before, meaning I'm not doing this for likes. I'm not doing this for views or subscribes or none of that stuff. I'm doing this for me because it's fun. And so my entertainment is watching YouTube videos that are just talking about stupid stuff, um, comedy channels, watching cartoons, um, you know, playing guitar, uh, things like that. Ha- hanging out with my friends, having Zooms where we're cracking up. Those are recreational for me. And that adds more entertainment to my life. And it adds more joy to my life, more sunshine where the sun is lacking. So I encourage you to seek entertainment, to have fun and give yourself permission to take in things, not for the sake of learning or for improving, but just for experiencing. My fifth tip is to unplug from the world as much as possible. So I like escape versions of entertainment because it's not really, a lot of it is not based on real life. If I'm watching Teen Titans Go, they might have some commentary in it, but it's mostly silly, right? It gives me an escape from the real world. The thing about technology today is that we are constantly connected. We are constantly in the know. And I don't think that we're supposed to be that connected, if I'm being honest. I don't think that a a human mind is supposed to take in that much information constantly, especially around the pandemic. We were getting like, I was getting minute by minute, you know, uh, updates on what's happening. You know, what's the improvements being made? Who's passing away? What are the symptoms? Like I was doom scrolling. And so I found myself spiraling. And so this was during, even though technically it was spring during March, but it was during winter. And so it really did not help my mental state to be constantly plugged in. And so I had to unplug. Yes, it's good to remain informed. Yes, it's good to be remain educated, but too much information can be overwhelming, daunting, and depressing. So I really recommend you unplugging. Take a trip if you can, go camping somewhere, go out of town if you can, spend the night over your friend's house where y'all just hang out and connect like I talked about before. Um, What else? Just sit there in silence on your living room floor. I do that. (laughs) So that's my fifth tip is to unplug from the world because the world is heavy. My sixth self-care tip for creative black women is to do work out with your body that is restorative and nourishing. So during the winter time, I don't do a lot of running. I don't do a lot of gymming. I don't have a lot of energy. And so what I focus on instead is remaining flexible, is stretching my body, moving slowly. Maybe I go for a walk. Maybe I do something light, right? Nothing that is super uh, exhausting, but something that is restorative. And so some people like yoga, some people like stretching, some people like, you know, just doing like body weight exercises, things that, that are low key and don't, don't drain you and exhaust you from everything. So in the winter time, I move more slowly and I'm just focusing on restoring my body, healing it. I'm focused on, you know, eating the right things. I'm focused on drinking tea, herbs, those kinds of things that keep my body limber and keep my body healthy in the wintertime. And it's really good also to keep moving to, you know, remain um, healthy so that our immune systems build. Um, Yeah. So I try to do things that are less draining and more restorative and nourishing and things that feel good, things that are healing. My seventh tip is to pamper yourself, (laughs) to pamper yourself. So in the wintertime, I allow myself to just like, to just be, I get my nails done. I get, you know, my eyebrows done. I just have to remind myself that I'm human, right? Like I have to remind myself like, okay, there you are, there you are, you know, and I'm worthy of being taken care of. I'm worthy of being loved on and pampered. I take long, hot showers. You know, I listen to the music in the shower. Um, What else I do? I do feet soak. Like I allow myself time to pamper myself. And so I think that's really imperative in your winter season, especially like tapping in like physically with yourself, like just feeling yourself, giving yourself hand massages or feet massages, or if you have it like that, going to go get massages, right? But allowing yourself to feel like a human, to allow yourself to be comforted and hugged, you know what I mean? Like to be physically um, affirmed. And so that's why I say that you should pamper yourself during your winter season. All right. And we are on number eight, and that is to eat nourishing and warm food and drink. So it is a given. I give myself at least 10 pounds in the winter time. I know I put on weight during the winter and I feel like it's normal like every other mammal and it sheds during the summer and the spring seasons. And so it's a lot of that is because I want nourishing, warm, hefty meals in the winter time that kind of feel like a warm hug. I drink a lot of hot drinks. And so in the winter time of my in the winter time of my life and my creativity, but also in real life, I eat nourishing food that feels like a hug. I eat comfort food for lack of better words. So I eat comfort food in the winter time. And I used to like be down on myself. I'm like, oh, I'm gaining weight. It's bad. It's like, that's what all mammals do in the winter time, right? Like it's okay. Like as long as you're not unhealthy, it's okay to treat yourself every once in a while or for a season eating healthy, 
warm comfort foods. And that could be tea, that could be coffee if you like coffee, hot chocolate, stews, soups, you know, warm meals. And so I recommend you doing that to take care of yourself, to nourish yourself and to self-care during your winter season. Number nine comes in at journaling and self-reflection. So I feel like wintertime is the perfect time to self-reflect. It's the perfect time to journal, to ask those introspective questions, the perfect time to go to counseling if you need to go to counseling. The world is kind of still, right? We have this, we have this um, length of time where it seems like nothing has happened and that can be depressing to a lot of people. But for me, I look at it as an opportunity to not do anything, to kind of just like take care of myself, to be my own best friend, to be my own lover, you know, like to spend time alone so that when summertime and springtime get here and it's more active, I've spent the time I needed to spend with myself, nourishing myself, taking care of myself. And so I journal a lot. I write self-love letters. You know, I really think about the things I actually want to do. I take the first quarter of the year to really set the trajectory for the rest of the year so that I'm not overwhelmed. Um, I give my time, I give myself space and time that I need to actually get on track with having a good year. So my year is usually like nine months and that's okay. And that's how I work in my season. And so for you, you need to, I, I suggest that you journal. I suggest that you, if you can go to counseling, I suggest that you really sit with yourself in silence and really ask yourself what you want, what you need, what you need in this moment and what you need for the year to continue. And that takes me into number 10, which is sitting still, being still. After the holidays, it's kind of like a holiday hangover, right? We've been rushing around, we've been spending money, we've been eating out, we've been eating a lot. You know, we've spent a lot of energy giving our energy to other people. And so for me, during that time, during like January to like mid-March, it's really just me for the most part. Like I'm not really, I hang out with my friends sometimes, but really it's not a lot going on. And so I take that time to sit still, to sit still. Cause a lot of us are uncomfortable with being still. A lot of us feel like we have to keep doing, we have to keep, you know, producing, keep connecting. And I don't think that the human was created to be in constant connection, constant, um, constant production, right? We have to take time to just sit still and to be quiet. A lot of us don't know ourselves because we haven't given ourselves time to be still and be quiet and listen to ourselves. And so I encourage you to spend time within January to March or whenever you can, whether you wanna go on vacation, take a weekend to just be by yourself, to be alone, to do what you need to do, to actually hear your own, your own heart, your own soul, your own spirit and see what it needs and so that you can meet the needs of yourself. And maybe you can't take a weekend off, maybe you can't take a week off. Take five minutes in the morning to just be still. Take five minutes, not forcing yourself to like not think of anything, not being hard on yourself, just being yourself. Be yourself for five minutes. Listen to your heartbeat, listen to your thoughts, listen to your breath, and be kind and gentle with yourself because you are worthy of kindness and gentleness and stillness. You don't have to be on and doing 24 seven. It is detrimental to your health, to your mind, and to your creativity if you're on 24 seven. So if you're in your winter season, don't fret. We all be, we've all been there, we will all be there. We all need to experience it. It's important um, for us just to rest, right? So even if you're in a warm place or whether you're in the snow, like here um, in the States, you can choose your own winter season and it's time that you honor that winter season. There's nothing wrong with you. You are not broken. Sometimes you just need to take time to rest. And so I hope that these self-care tips were helpful. If you're a black woman creative, be sure to download the Creative Black Woman Toolkit down below. Um, it's helpful for you. That was a mouthful. It's helpful for you in your journey. If you're a fan of this video, please be sure to check out the next video on winter in your life and why that's important. I know it will be helpful for you as it was helpful for me and I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye.